Chef Jim Belaya. Welcome to Math and Science Gumbo. You know, if you're like me, you love fresh baked bread and pastry. To me, there's nothing like the aroma of fresh, hot baked goods right out of the oven. On this episode of Math and Science Gumbo, we'll learn about the units of measurement, fractions, and the physical and chemical changes of baking. And one of the best ways I could think of to show you about measurement, fractions, and the physical and chemical changes is to bake a loaf of yeast or leaven bread together. Chef Jambalaya like shortening, shortening. Chef Jambalaya like shortening bread. <laughs> See, the key ingredient that causes physical and chemical changes in bread dough is right in this little packet. Yeast. See, when I bake bread, the first thing I do is dissolve and proof my yeast. The teaspoon of sugar causes the chemical change for yeast to activate. Your yeast is ready when it foams up, like this. This is called proofing the yeast. The other ingredients in basic bread recipes are simple. You've got flour, salt, warm water, and of course, shortening. Now your ingredients control the physical changes of your bread. If you're making something like French or Italian bread, using olive oil as your shortening makes it a little crustier. And if you're making country style bread, using melted butter makes the loaf a little softer. And if you actually want to try baking your own bread, you can get this and other great recipes from our website. Once the dough is mixed, the next step is to knead the dough, like this. This is where the next chemical change takes place releasing the gluten. This starts the process of an important physical change to the dough, rising. The gluten helps make the bread dough strong enough to hold the air. Bread dough needs a little warm air to rise, so put it in a warm but not hot place in your kitchen. I mean, we want it to rise, not bake yet. Now, take a look at the physical change here in the dough. Here's the dough before it is risen, and here's the dough that's ready to be baked. The dough continues to change once you put it in the oven to bake. The heat causes the dough to expand and the natural sugars to caramelize. That's what gives bread its brown crust. Well, there you have it. Raw ingredients of flour, salt, yeast, sugar, shortening, and butter interacting chemically to change physically into a tasty loaf of bread. Well, not all tasty breads are made with yeast. For centuries, people living in Middle Eastern countries have baked unleavened bread called Pita. Now it's made with nearly all the same ingredients, but without the yeast. Pita loaves are flat pockets of bread that don't physically change as much during the baking process as bread. You know, made with yeast. <laughs> Ooh, now we're going to cook us up a mess of frogs. I guarantee you're going to love these frogs. Oh, I catch up myself from the Cuyahoga Bayou. I did. They're cooking. Hmm? What? They're cookies. Oh, they're just cookies called frogs, huh? <clears throat> Sorry. Thought we were going to do some Cajun cooking. Anywho, there's a way of making baked goods without baking with recipes like no-bake cookies. These recipes involve mixing correct proportions of ingredients, heating them up, and cooling them down to cause physical and chemical changes. That's what happens when we mix up this batch of frogs. Wait. What if the recipe only makes enough frogs to give one cookie to each kid in the class and we want to give everyone three cookies? Take a look at the recipe for frogs online and calculate what you need to do to double the recipe or cut it in half. To preserve the physical and chemical changes you've made with these raw ingredients, store your finished frogs in the refrigerator. Nearly everyone I know loves Rice Krispie treats. They're simple and easy to make. And they're perfect for demonstrating multiples or fractions. I think you'll need my help demonstrating this and the right tools. Yikes. Yeah! Huh. There we go. Cutting them in half makes two big treats. None for you. Maybe too big. How about quarters? Yeah! Yeah! Well, quarters would work better, but you probably want to share your treats with the whole class. So we should divide our pan into sixteenths. Yeah, 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 yeah! There you go. That'll give us sixteen roughly equally sized treats. Sixteen parts of a whole recipe. Mm-hmm. You need to take a rest. Well, the absolute joy of being a chef. 
trying the recipe hmm, before you share it with the class. <laughs> For math and science gumbo, I'm Chef Jim Belaya. Yeah.